Hi boys and girls, it's now time for activity number two. And this is the T in STEAM, and T stands for technology. Now when you think of technology, you're probably thinking things like computers and rocket ships and all those kinds of fancy things. But actually some of the earliest technology is what we now call simple machines. And there are six simple machines that we're gonna take a look at. And when you look at a big train engine, Actually, a big train engine is just a collection of a lot of simple machines all working together. So here's our first simple machine. It's called an inclined plane, sometimes called a ramp. If you take a look at this ladder here, this ladder is an inclined plane. It helps you get from a lower level to an upper level. When you go up a set of stairs, you are going up an inclined plane like the stairs that help you get into the train. You're going up an inclined plane. That's our first simple machine. Another example of a lever is a handcart. And a handcart is used by people who are repairing the railroad tracks. One person gets on either side of this lever and they push it up and down, just like a seesaw. And when they push it up and down, it causes the handcart to go down the rails and they can go fix a part of the rail line. Another example of a lever that you're probably familiar with is a hammer. A hammer is a lever. When we want to remove a nail, we put the end of the hammer right like that, and the head of the hammer is the pivot point, or what we call the fulcrum. And you'll notice as I pull back on this lever, it pulls the nail right out of the board. Another example of a lever, can opener. We use a can opener to open up bottles or cans. We hold it, we, we open it up like this, it acts as a lever, or we can use it to open up a can. It also is a lever, a very simple machine that's been around for a long time. Our next simple machine is the pulley. And here's an example of a pulley. What a pulley is, is a wheel on an axle. Sound familiar? It's usually one wheel and one axle. And I've got, a, I've got a piece of string going through here, and I can use this to raise or lower things. Where might you find a pulley? Well, you could find it on a flagpole. If you've ever seen somebody raise a flag or lower a flag, they're using a pulley to do it. Maybe your mom hangs their clothes out on a clothesline. A clothesline is a pulley as well. Clotheslines usually go this way, and you can use the line and move the clothes back and forth across the line. So pulleys are used quite a bit throughout our lives. And the last and final simple machine is probably the simplest of simple machines. You never would think it's a simple machine. It's called a screw. And a screw has a, a, is another one of those simple machines that's been used for many, many years. And we use screws all the time. How about when we want to bolt some things together. If you look around your house, you'll probably find there's lots of bolts and you're just taking a bolt on here and it goes on this screw, goes like that. How about a light bulb? Okay, you take a light bulb and you screw it into the socket like this and there's another example of a screw. Or how about when you want to open a bottle? You want to open a bottle or a jar? you're using a screw just like this. Our next simple machine is called the wedge. And here's something interesting about the wedge. Archaeologists have discovered this simple machine going back two and a half million years ago. Here's a good example of a wedge. That would be an ax. You notice that it slopes in this way and it slopes in this way. And, and wedges are used to separate things. If I took this ax, and slammed it into a piece of wood, it would split the wood into two things. Guess what? A pair of scissors is also a wedge. When we use a pair of scissors to cut through a piece of paper, we have that wedge shape, and the top part of the scissors and the bottom part of the scissors are able to cut through the paper because they're in that shape. How about a knife? Okay, a knife is another example of a wedge. It has that sort of that V shape in it and it's used to cut things because of that V-shape. 
This is a simple machine that's been used for hundreds of thousands of years. It's one of the most basic of all machines. Our next simple machine is called the wheel and axle. Wheel and axle has been used for thousands of years as a simple machine. If you look at the wheels on this hand cart, you notice there's a wheel over here and a wheel over here. There's a bar that goes between the two wheels. Wheel, wheel, and axle. How about your bicycle? You've got a wheel and axle. You've got a wheel and there's an axle that goes through the middle of that wheel to hold it on the frame. Uh, wheels and axles can also be found on the train. For example, the train wheels. There's two wheels and there's a bar that goes between them. We've got a wheel and axle. If you ride a skateboard, you really need some good wheels and axles. One on the front and one on the back to keep your skateboard going. Wheel and axle. Okay, here's your challenge, boys and girls. I want you to look around your house and see how many simple machines you can find. Can you find some screws? Can you find an inclined plane? Can you find a wedge or a pulley? Then, when you ride on the Northern Central Railway of York, how many simple machines can you find? Can you find a wheel and axle? Can you find a ramp on the outside of the train? Can you find a screw on the inside of a coach car? You will be amazed at the number of simple machines that are around you everywhere you go. Hang tight, we're getting ready for the next activity.